Have you ever played through a game of Pokemon and gone, wait a minute, something isn't right here? Well my friend, that's a glitch, and if you play Pokemon, you should probably get used to them soon because they're not going anywhere. While you may encounter a glitch here or there playing through the game's single player story, what you might not be aware of is the vast number of glitches that have affected the competitive scene in one way or another. We'll be covering a good number of them in today's video, but these range from Oko moves always connecting to a field effect that can melt you and your opponent's health bar at the end of each turn. So if you're down to learn more about these glitches, be sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe because I make tons of competitive Pokemon content. I've even got a long playlist full of niche competitive discussion videos that you can check out once this one's over. But let's get right into it. But first, sponsor time. Thanks to Opera GX for sponsoring this video. Your browser is ruining your gaming session. Default browsers hog resources like RAM and CPU to make your gaming performance worse. Luckily, Opera GX has you covered. Their browser has tons of useful features to prevent anything from getting in the way of that win. With GX Control, you can keep your PC's performance high without needing to close out of the browser, as the panel allows you to limit the amount of CPU or RAM you want to let Opera GX use. And why even bother with other boring browsers when you can try out one of Opera GX's many mods that allow you to customize your browsing experience? I personally love Pokemon games, so I opted for this Pokemon Emerald theme that not only has this cute animated wallpaper on my homepage, but has these nostalgic sound effects when hovering over icons or opening and closing tabs. Mods on the Opera Store can even get you cool features like keyboard sound effects or background music. And they're all super easy to manage as you can enable and disable mods and notifications at the sidebar. Speaking of the sidebar, you can even have Discord open on it for easy access instead of needing to clumsily alt tab all the time. With GX Corner you can stay up to date with free games and get news on the latest deals and new releases no matter what platform you prefer to game on. If you have any questions you can consult Aria, Opera GX's integrated generative AI. And I know what you're thinking, switching browsers is so frustrating. Luckily, with the quick import tool, you can get all your old settings and bookmarks from your previous browser into Opera GX super fast. It's even compatible with every Chrome extension, so there's really no reason not to make the switch. You can download Opera GX for free using my link in the description down below right now. Like I said, there's really no reason not to make the switch and it's a great browser. Thanks again to Opera GX for sponsoring this video. Skydrop is a 60 base power physical flying move introduced into Generation 5. Skydrop would cause the user to fly into the air turn 1, straight up abducting one of the opponent's Pokemon, granted they weren't too heavy, and hold them hostage up there until the next turn. While in the sky, neither of the Pokemon could be targeted, meaning that this was effectively a way to cancel out a Pokemon's action every other turn. While you might think of it as Fly's cooler younger brother, it was actually a pretty useful move, but you might have not seen it at all that generation because it was banned from official competition until Generation 6. Kind of a waste, huh? So why was this move banned? Well, there's a glitch involving this move and gravity. You see, the move gravity would automatically ground all flying, levitating, or otherwise non-grounded Pokemon, immediately ending the effect of Skydrop, but only partially. While both the user and the target of the move would be visibly on the ground, only the user of the move would be able to move freely again. Huh? The target of the move is now completely locked or unable to do anything, like ever. Like, it's just locked for the rest of the game. Well, actually, just until the Skydrop user gets KO'd, but this is effectively a way of putting a Pokemon in the penalty box. You could just lead with a fast Skydrop user and a slow Gravity Mon and immediately put something in jail. Obviously, this was highly abusable and could cause someone to run away with the game, so the move Skydrop was banned in online battles on November 10th, 2010 and remained that way all the way until the Nintendo Wi-Fi connection was discontinued on May 20th, 2014. While the move wasn't usable in Gen 5, it did find a home on many competitive teams in future generations like Gen 7, where Assault Vest Tapu Koko would often run it. However, Gen 7 was no stranger to glitches either. As a matter of fact, some of the most interesting glitches come from Pokemon Sun and Moon. Gen 7 introduced players to the concept of Z-moves. These were one-time powered-up versions of moves that required you to equip a Pokemon with a Z-Crystal. These could either turn offensive moves into a generic but super powerful move depending on the type of the move, or add an additional effect to status moves, increasing their value in the game. So when the move Parting Shot was introduced into the game, surely it would have a pretty interesting Z variant, right? Of course it would. Normally, Parting Shot would lower the target's attack and special attack before switching out the user, but Z Parting Shot would do all this while healing up the Pokemon that took its place. And it would freeze the game. Yep, the powered up version of cursing out your opponent and leaving is cursing out your opponent and then ending the match instantly. 
While this bug was present upon the release of Pokemon Sun and Moon, it was quickly patched out in an update down the road. The glitch also affected the move Memento, which causes the user to faint, harshly lowering the target's attack and special attack. Due to this, both moves were banned from online play until the glitch was patched out. But that wasn't the only move that could cause the game to freeze in Generation 7. Actually, this glitch may have been patched, but we still don't know what code error caused it. Let me take you back to 2018. The Dallas Regional Championships are just around the corner and you're getting ready to compete. You know for a fact that Curse Snorlax is the call for the event due to its ability to set up and win games. But there have been some rumblings about some moves in the game causing a double game freeze, ending the match instantly. One of these suspected moves is Curse. You see, while Curse is suspected to be the cause for the bug, there's actually a few moves that may cause it. But the thing is, it's not really consistent and people are uncertain why the bug occurs in the first place. As you land in Dallas the night prior to the event, you get a notification from Twitter. Various moves, including Curse, have been banned from competitive play due to them possibly causing double game freezes. You see, this would be highly abusable in tournaments as the game's rules make it so that if a player is in a losing position and they use Curse to attempt a double game freeze, the match would end up being restarted unless the opponent has a 3-1 lead in Pokemon. This can also be a pretty terrifying win condition, as only having one Pokemon left doesn't mean you've lost just yet. The Pokemon could be a belly drowned up Snorlax with four turns of Trick Room left against a team with absolutely no protect users or way to KO the Snorlax. But even though you would win in that situation, if the opponent uses Curse to freeze the game, this position according to the rulebook would result in the player with three Pokemon winning. Due to this, the move was banned prior to the competition and was only made legal again after a patch fixed it. Unfortunately, after researching and asking Leonard Kraft, the community's biggest mechanics and glitch researcher, it seems as though the cause and fix for the double game freeze remains unknown to this day by the public. The only real lead we have at the moment is that the version of 3DS being used could have been a factor in some way, but we may never actually know the cause. Before we leave Generation 7, there's one more glitch in the game involving a niche move in doubles. This glitch, funnily enough, was actually very well received by the community and a large number of players hoped that it was an intentional mechanic made to balance out Z moves a bit. The move Wide Guard is normally a rock type status move that blocks all damage coming from moves that target more than one Pokemon on the field like Rock Slide or Earthquake, while allowing the partner to take an action that turn rather than protecting itself. But upon the release of Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, Wide Guard not only blocked damage from spread moves, but it would also cut the damage of Z moves targeted into the user or its partner. While Wide Guard was fairly niche, but still very useful, this skyrocketed the value of the move beyond that, making it so it could instantly turn the tide of a match. Unfortunately, this was eventually patched out of the game, leaving many players lamenting the loss of an ironically very good mechanic caused by a bug. While Generation 8 was a fairly buggy game that has had more than its fair share of criticism, within battle there actually weren't that many glitches that affected competitive play compared to other gens. However, there was one interaction that I'm not personally convinced was done intentionally. You see, this generation introduced the mechanic of Dynamaxing. This would cause the Dynamax Pokemon to grow to a large size and have each one of their moves become a generic powered up version of them with secondary effects for each like electric moves setting up electric terrain or normal moves decreasing the opposing team's speed. One big detail was the fact that all status moves would become the move Max Guard. This was just protect, but really big, and it didn't allow for Dynamax moves to deal partial damage through it. This would lead to one of the most reliable Trick Room setups in the game becoming a very strong strategy. You see, if a Dynamax Pokemon carried the move Trick Room, on turn 1, they could click the max guard that corresponded with Trick Room in their moveset. At that point, a prankster Pokemon with access to the move Copycat, like Liopard or Riolu, yes, that Riolu, could click Copycat to use the move used just prior to them. Copycat would read Max Guard as whatever the base move was, meaning that Trick Room players were able to set up Trick Room with plus 1 priority rather than the typical minus 7 priority at the cost of just one Dynamax turn. And while that may seem like a really high cost to pay, Trick Room teams were actually especially powerful in Dynamax formats due to their pressure and damage they're able to exert with their own Dynamax Pokemon like Calyrex Ice or Hatterene, so it was actually worth it. You could argue that this was intentional, but I think it's far too niche, and I believe that Game Freak didn't actually want this to happen. But in the end, it wasn't unhealthy for the metagame, nor did it cause any game-breaking situations, so it remained untouched to this day. Funny enough, this strategy could actually be countered by using any move with higher than plus one priority. So you could completely stuff the Trick Room setup by spamming Fake Out over and over again, while the opponent tries to copycat Trick Room, forcing them to copycat the Fake Out and fail. On a related note, Incineroar could completely shut down a GMAX Hatterene's Trick Room setup by using the Fake Out strategy on turn one of the game, then parting shotting the Hatterene on turn two. Hatterene's ability Magic Bounce reflects the move back onto the Incineroar, 
forcing Hatterene to be the one to switch out and end its Dynamax early. I knew there was a reason I really liked this cat. On we go to Generation 9, and man, this one's a doozy. Gen 9, or Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, had the most scuffed online of any Pokemon game upon release, and to this day, new bugs keep getting discovered. But we should start out with the first bug that affected competitive play. So, how do I put this? Sheer Cold Shen Pao was optimal. Basically, in peer-to-peer -peer battles, it seemed that RNG was fixed. If you Sheer Colded turn 1, it would always land. I think, like... Turn 2, Heat Wave always missed or something? I don't remember the details, but what I'm trying to tell you is that the RNG seed did not change game to game. So if you and your opponent made the exact same plays a hundred times over game to game, every single match would be identical from damage rolls to crits to sleeps, whatever. This was obviously an issue because it meant that the RNG seed could be abused by any player who could know when to secure a sheer cold KO or land a hypnosis or whatever. Eventually, this was patched out with an update that came out soon after the game released, and luckily enough, rank battles weren't affected by this bug because they didn't exist upon the release of the game. While at the time it was annoying that we had to wait to play ranked, with this bug active, I think it was probably for the best. Speaking of really weird things that players noticed on the release of Generation 9, we need to talk about Ndidi. You see, Ndidi male and female are Pokemon with sexual dimorphism. Not only do they look pretty different, but their move pools and stats are different as well, with Ndidi male being a faster offensive variant and Ndidi female being a bulkier, more supportive variant. While Ndidi female had more usage in Generation 8 due to its better move pool, it didn't have access to the move Trick Room, which was exclusive to Ndidi male. So its best use was just to be a Follow Me user that helped Pokemon like Partner Hatterene set up Trick Room while Ndidi redirected attacks into itself. But upon Gen 9's release, players began to notice that Ndidi females found in 5-star raid dens had a chance to actually know the move Trick Room, a move meant to be exclusive to its male counterpart. Players were confused by this as Ndidi female couldn't learn Trick Room by breeding, TMs, or level up. It was actually exclusive to raids, and Ndidi seemed to be the only Pokemon with a raid-exclusive move. Clearly, this was a bug, and players anticipated that they wouldn't be able to use them in competition. With the official word on Trick Room Ndidi female from Pokemon was that if the Pokemon was caught legitimately in game, it was legal. And thus, Game Freak, rather than admit that it was a bug, created the most annoying Trick Room duo of all time in Ndidi Armor Rouge. Normally, you'd never have to worry about Ndidi going for Trick Room, just that it would allow for its partner to go for it. But now, Ndidi players could simply force a 50 50 by choosing to protect the partner Armor Rouge and Trick Rooming with the Ndidi instead then spamming Helping Hand Expanding Force to sweep the opposing team. Eventually, after the Teal Mask DLC drop, Pokemon added Trick Room to Ndidi Female's learn set via TMs, but it was already a year into the game's life cycle, and well past the point players spent hours hunting for the rare Zero Speed Zero Attack Trick Room Ndidi Female. But we're not done with glitched moves in Gen 9. No, not by any means. Next, we need to discuss Order Up. You see, Don Dozo and Tatsugiri are a very unique duo of Pokemon, because Tatsugiri running the ability Commander will allow for the Don Dozo to consume it, protecting it from all moves and getting plus two in all of Dondozo's stats while the Tatsugiri is unable to move. Along with this mechanic, Dondozo got its signature move in order up. This move dealt physical dragon type damage, and depending on the form of the Tatsugiri in Dondozo's mouth, it would raise either the Dondozo's speed, attack, or defense. Upon the release of the game, and for months after the fact, order up would boost Dondozo's stats even if it targeted into a protect. This meant that order up was actually a really great pressure tool into players even if they were stalling for leftovers recovery, as it wouldn't matter since Dondozo would just boost its attack on the protect and get the KO in the next turn anyways. However, upon the release of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet version 1.2, this bug was fixed and the move would no longer boost on protects. This was only after two months of competitive play where Dondozo dominated tournaments. It took second at San Diego Regionals and second at Orlando Regionals, with many other top cuts in these and other smaller events. Dondozo had been much stronger upon release than it was ever intended to be, and yet Game Freak only clarified that this was a bug with the move months after the fact, rather than banning or patching the move away immediately. A lesson they clearly learned from, as after the second DLC dropped, they ended up banning the move Dragon Cheer. Dragon Cheer is a Dragon-type status move, which increases the crit chances of the target by one stage if they are not a Dragon-type, and two stages if they are Dragon-type. This meant that Dragon-types with Dragon Cheer applied had a 50% chance to crit, and if they were holding a Razor Claw or Scope Lens, a 100% chance to crit. Funny enough, upon release, this move had a bug where the crit rate wouldn't be cleared upon switching the Pokemon out, as was intended by the developers. Due to this, the move was banned from competitive play in official tournaments right away. Had they not banned this move, it would mean a player could boost their whole team's crit rate and freely swap around the Pokemon with no downside. The final bug of Generation 9 is actually one of my favorite pieces of competitive Pokemon lore. Let me take you back to 2024. The San Antonio Regional Championships are just around the corner and you're getting ready to compete. You know for a fact Roaring Moon Weezing is the call for the event, 
due to its ability to set up and win games, but there have been some rumblings about a glitch in the game causing the team to function in a way that wasn't intended by the developers. You see, upon the release of the first DLC, wheezing was reintroduced into the game, and thus neutralizing gas was reintroduced. This ability turns off all other abilities except for a select few, like Calyrex's as one. Upon mechanics testing, players found that Protosynthesis and Quark Drive on Paradox Pokemon weren't turned off by neutralizing gas. Eventually, a team was created to abuse this mechanic. Booster Energy Roaring Moon could boost its attack or speed next to Weezing, without fear of Intimidate ruining its setup with Dragon Dance. It could even run Tailwind to allow for Weezing to outspeed and burn or taunt opposing Pokemon on the other side of the field, like Tornadus who didn't have access to its Prankster ability. It was revealed just prior to the San Antonio Regional Championships that this was a bug and it was patched out in version 3.0, just before the event, meaning that this archetype of team that had performed very well at high levels of play was instantly made unviable at its core. Some players still even attempted to run the team and did pretty well, but the fact remained that this archetype was wiped from the game due to a patch. Okay, so I've got just one more left for today's video, and obviously we didn't cover all of the glitches, that's going to be probably in another video, but I saved the best one for last because it's one of the craziest glitches in competitive history. It almost never affected VGC matches, but it was still pretty common in singles play. This glitch is known as Acid Rain. Yeah, that name is pretty hard, right? Well, the effect is harder. Acid Rain was a bug exclusive to Heart Gold, Soul Silver, and Platinum that caused a special glitched weather condition that dealt damage up to four times at the end of each turn. Basically, the games had this internal priority list of field conditions and weather effects, including Trick Room, Gravity, Uproar, and the Four Weathers. If a Pokemon was KO'd via the move Pursuit trapping them, and while any of these effects were active, then all effects including and below the effect on the list would become active at once. Beyond that, Despite Hail and Sand only dealing damage to Pokemon not immune to them, the game would deal damage to all active Pokemon four times, once per each weather, even though Sun and Rain shouldn't deal damage. When you realize that weather effects deal 1 16th of the active Pokemon's health and damage, this meant that a quarter of the Pokemon's health bar could be melted away at the end of each turn. This could also be abused defensively though, because Pokemon with access to abilities that heal due to certain weather conditions like Rain Dish or Ice Body would actually heal four times at the end of each turn instead of get damaged, leading to Pokemon like Wall Rain becoming nearly unkillable with proper setup. While this glitch may seem pretty specific and difficult to set up, you need to realize that one of the best pursuit users in the game was Tyranitar, a Pokemon with access to Sandstream, meaning that Tyranitar could easily secure a pursuit trap with Sand active, resulting in Acid Rain with Sand and Rain becoming active. This glitch also meant that Pokemon with forms dependent on weather like Castform or Cherum could freeze the game indefinitely. Because these Pokemon immediately get their forms upon switch in, it means that they'll cycle through each one of their forms for every active weather over and over again, causing the game to need to be shut down to end the battle. Luckily, this wasn't very common in VGZ due to Pursuit not being a very common move in doubles with Crunch being preferable on Tyranitar. Breeze Eye actually has a full video going over the details of this glitch in depth over on his channel, so if you find this at all interesting, I highly recommend you check out his video if you get the chance. But today we only covered a few of the major glitches that have affected the competitive landscape of Pokemon. Let me know which ones I missed and if you want a part 2. Before you go though, I want to remind you that I have tons of videos on competitive Pokemon that I really think you would enjoy in a playlist at the end card of this video, but I also really want to start making making some more longer, in-depth videos like this one. While I love making nearly daily content, it does take away from the bigger projects that I enjoy more due to time constraints. So I'd really appreciate it if you were to take a look at my Patreon page linked below in the description and in the end card. With enough support over there, I can actually have the freedom to focus more of my time on projects like this video that you just watched instead of having to farm daily vids to stay afloat. You could also become a channel member for pretty similar perks. So if you want to help me out, the link is below. For as low as $1 a month, you can get to see your name at the end of my videos like all these lovely people, and for some slightly higher tiers, you can even get bonus videos and some other fun extras. A special thank you to my most boosted supporters, Adag V, Avatar67, Kanor, Halo, Joseph B, and Narwiz for their generous pledges, and thank you so much for watching and subscribing. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.